In this demonstration, I'm going to show how to capture RF modulated KEPOB signals using an InfiniVision oscilloscope and then demodulate those signals in hardware with the oscilloscope and then decode them using the user definable Manchester decoder. Now, KEPOB signals, they're RF modulated, they range a little over 300 megahertz, some up to over 400 megahertz. This particular one is an RF frequency of 434 megahertz and it utilizes uh, ASK, amplitude shift key modulation, and also Manchester encoded. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now the first thing you have to do is how do you get the signals from this thing into the oscilloscope? Well, what you need is some kind of sniffer probe. This is a, a really good one. This is primarily made for uh, sniffing EMC signals. You typically connect it up to a spectrum analyzer, but it works on a scope as well. I just call it a sniffer probe. If you don't have one of these, you can create one really cheaply by just taking your standard 10 to 1 probe and connect the ground lead to the probe tip. Signal to noise ratio is not the best, but I have found that it works. Now, I also created one of my own. I started with one of these BNC to grabber adapters that you might use to connect the output of a, a function generator to some uh, uh, dot that you're trying to drive. Just clip the wires off, twisted them, soldered them back together, and created something that's pretty close to this, and it works pretty good, and it was only a couple of dollars. But in the demonstration today, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, uh, wand. They cost anywhere from a couple hundred dollars, but I've seen them up to a couple thousand dollars. So let's go ahead and get started with our demonstration. So to set the oscilloscope up, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take my sniffer probe, set it down on the table, lay the key fob on top of it, and then I will press single on the oscilloscope to set up a single shot acquisition, then press a button on the key fob, and then it's a bit of an iterative process to set the oscilloscope up if you don't know, since it's single shot, what the signal is. So let's go ahead and begin. What I'm going to start with is first begin with a default setup on the oscilloscope. Next, I'm going to set my time reference left, which will put my trigger one division to the right of the left side of the screen. Uh, go into the channel one menu, select 50 ohm coupling, and then I'm going to change the volts per division, start around 100 millivolts per division, put my trigger level up a little above the baseline, then press single on the scope. Now I'll press a button on the key fob. There we captured something, but it's not optimally set up. I could uh, expand the vertical sum, kind of move it up to the upper part of the display, change the time base so we can get a little bit more. There we captured one burst and part of a second burst. Let's scale it down some more. There we captured four bursts. Now, that's still not quite optimum. Let's do it one more time. There we have what we want to capture. Now, let's, um, I'm going to turn on the scope's zoom time base and go in here and take a closer look and see what's going on. What I can see initially, though, is this first burst looks different than these next three. So I'm going to turn on the zoom time base open it up a little bit, and then just begin scrolling through. Here you can see the first burst is expanded down here in the zoom time base. So you can see the first burst is nothing more than a sync burst. The second burst is where the important information is, as well as the third and the fourth. It begins with a short RF burst, followed by it looks like several sync pulses. So this is sort of a preamble and then it's followed by the Manchester encoded modulated data that we want to decode, and that begins around right here. Now we can scroll through the rest of that, and we can take a look at the third burst. Looks pretty similar to the second, and the last burst looks similar to the previous two. They're actually identical, the second, third, and fourth, and we'll see that when we get decoding turned on. Now, in order to decode this, uh, we have to demodulate it first. The uh, oscilloscope's 
Manchester decoder is hardware based, so we have to hardware demodulate this signal, which is possible with a scope. It's kind of done in a roundabout way. We're going to have to use a special trigger mode. Right now, we're triggering on the first edge occurrence that it sees at that first burst. I'm going to go into the scope's trigger menu, change it to a pattern trigger based on a timeout condition a low condition on channel 1 for greater than 2 microseconds. And so what it's going to do is going to trigger when it sees the first modulated pulse go low. If we press single, it should trigger about the same spot. Now at this point, it's digitally demodulating this signal inside the oscilloscope. We need to get that signal out of the oscilloscope and fed back into another channel of the scope to de decode. So I'm going to go into the scope's utility menu, select the rear panel, and I'm going to send the trigger source out the trigger output BNC on the back panel. And then I have a BNC cable connected from the back panel to channel 2. I'm going to turn on channel 2, and I'm going to invert it because it's actually a digitally demodulated inverted version. Uh, let's position the channel 2 signal down here somewhere below the channel 1 signal. And I think we're all set. Let's press single, press the key fob button. There you can see the digital demodulated signal. Let's turn on the zoom mode and take a closer look here. This is all the, the first sync pulse or burst. And here you can see the digital demodulated representation of our RF signal. Now it begins with this long pulse. This is not Manchester. The first sync pulse occurs right here, which is the third rising edge, or the second rising edge. It's the third edge. There are exactly 15 sync pulses, and then the first bit that we want to decode is this one right here. So I'm going to turn the zoom mode back off. Let's capture it one more time. Let's go into the serial decode menu, select the Manchester decode. And now there are three submenus that we've got several parameters to set up. The user definable Manchester decoder and trigger is made for a broad range of protocols. So there are several parameters we have to set up to define this bus. Our source is channel two. Our threshold, we need to set in about the center of our channel 2 signal, the demodulated signal. The baud rate of this particular key fob um, is 4.83 kilobaud, kilobits per second. Tolerance, we can just leave at the default setting. Now let's go into the bus configuration. Uh, we can decode it in bit format, will just give us a string of ones and zeros or we can use word format, give us a little higher level decoding. Sync size, remember I said there are 15 sync pulses. Let's set that to 15. Header size, in this particular uh, message, there, uh, there's an ID that's 16 bits long, two bytes. And then there are eight words, consisting of eight bits per word, and a trailer, there's a one bit parity. Let's back out of this menu, go into our last menu, settings. The start edge is number three. That's where the first sync pulse occurs. Polarity, falling edge during the middle of a bit period will be translated as a one. Bit order, MSB, idle bits. For this, I need to set it to five. And the decode base, we have a choice of hex, ASCII, or unsigned decimal. We'll leave it in hex. And then I'm going to turn on my lister. So let's, uh, let's try this again. I'll press single, press the button, and there we can see the decode below. You can see the first sync burst decodes as all zeros. And then we have an ID of 996D. And you can see more information up here in the lister. And there you can see the contents of those three bursts. And they're all identical. However, if I press single again, 
the code changes. So it has a hopping code. Now, I borrowed this from a colleague of mine. You know, I understand if I push this 256 times, it's not going to work on his car anymore. So I'm not going to do that. Now, if you'd like more detail about how to set the scope up to decode uh, key fob signals based on uh, RF modulated uh, Manchester encoded, based on amplitude ship keen, we have an application note that you can download. It's called Decoding Automotive Key Fob Communication Based on Manchester Encoded uh, ASK Modulation. You can download this at the website at the URL listed on your screen. There's also uh, several videos there, including this particular video, on other automotive applications, including CAN, LIN, FlexRay, CAN-FD. Uh, so I suggest you go there if you want more additional information. So thanks for watching this video. Simplify.